Pearson is the manager of air quality and meteorology, there we go, at Toronto Pearson and has almost uh, 15 years experience in environment, environmental management, primarily in the field of air quality. Uh, her work at the airport revolves around monitoring air quality at the airport, understanding the emissions from the airport and reporting to various government agencies and, and working with other um, uh, environmental management areas. So since joining the GTA in 2009, she co-authored the airport's greenhouse gases policy, which is unbelievably aggressive. I can't believe you got your CEO to sign it. It's amazing. Uh, and has been working with uh, her fleet and energy managers to reduce energy use and greenhouse gases from the GTAA equipment and buildings. So help me in welcoming Allison. Thank Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, I apologize, I am not a fleet manager. Our fleet manager could not make it today. So if you have very detailed fleet questions, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to contact him. His name is Mike Hewlett. And as with anybody else uh, at the GTAA involved with Partners in Project Green, you can always get in touch with us through Jennifer. So I will be talking about our electric vehicle fleet program. We have a staged approach that started some years ago. Uh, that started with our airside fleet. So the airside fleet consists of what we call ground service equipment. These are baggage tugs. They're uh, some of the little tow vehicles that you see running around when you're sitting in the airplane and wondering what all those little tiny things are running around. They are not standard uh, fleet vehicles. They're pretty specialized. We have 160 level three fast charge stations at the airport. They offer a 30 minute charge for these ground service equipment vehicles. Um, or any other compatible vehicles, obviously. They are located down in the service level, however. They are not generally available for use. Um, they're below the terminals, and there are generally two chargers in between each set of gates. So that pretty much means there are two chargers per gate, uh, giving lots of capacity for any sort of equipment. The ground service equipment for which these were installed usually comprise the baggage handling equipment, some tugs, uh, some of the other tenants at the airport are bringing in their own electric vehicles. They are available to any of our tenants. We uh, do not charge for the use of these chargers. They're part of the general services. So our tenants and airlines are paying for them regardless of whether or not they use them. So there is quite a bit of incentive to actually make use of those. Uh, the really great thing for us was it improved air quality down in the service levels. Most of those vehicles were in fact diesel previously, so you can imagine what the uh, service levels were like for the people wandering around down there, um, all of the baggage handlers and that sort of thing. So there, there was a large incentive for us to put these in. It really made a lot of improvements. Um, obviously, it also reduced the criteria contaminants and the greenhouse gas emissions. Since these do, uh, units do allow a 30-minute charge, they actually permitted the airlines to reduce the number of pieces of equipment they had to keep running. Uh, basically, they could charge some equipment while they were using other equipment. They were actually able to reduce their GSE fleet sizes, which was a great incentive for them as well. Those things are fairly expensive considering how tiny they are and how specialized they are. So it was, it was really great, especially for Air Canada and such, that have enormous GSE fleets. Um, there is virtually no waiting time for a charge. You drive your vehicle up to it, you plug it in, 30 minutes later it has an absolutely full charge, and that's assuming you were you know, running on fumes, so to speak, when you drove up to it. As has been pointed out, that is rarely the case. So some of these things will actually charge in a matter of minutes. Uh, the level three charging supports between 400 and 500 pieces of equipment for all the users at the airport. We're not actually entirely sure how many there are since we don't own most of them. Uh, we have one of the largest or possibly the largest fast charging infrastructure in North America. We certainly did when it was installed. So just to show some of the level three chargers, this is what they look like. They're not nearly as pretty as the level one chargers for consumers. Uh, this is one of the little, uh, this is not actually a tug, this is just for general transportation on air side. You can see it's plugged in there. Um, unfortunately, that's a little dark with the bright lights. That one is, in fact, a baggage tug. Again, it's plugged in under one of the terminals. So these things are incredibly uh, used. They're very efficient, and they charge very, very quickly. So the second stage of our uh, EV rollout was employee fleet vehicles. We do run a fairly large fleet, and we are in the process of actually getting some decent electric out there. Uh, the chargers being installed are dual-port chargers. 
Um, they have the provision to expand to five ports, so you could, in fact, roll five cars up to one charger in the future. Right now, you can only do two and charge them all at once. They are level two chargers. These give, uh, we find, a, char a full charge in four to six hours. The vehicles are available to all GTAA employees who travel around the airport, uh, airside or groundside, on company business. All you need to do to uh, get approved for that is to make a little appointment with our fleet manager because, as has been pointed out a couple of times, driving one of these EVs is not exactly the same as driving a gasoline vehicle. We get a little better uh, mileage and usage out of them if people have at least a five-minute training session ahead of time so they don't back into something or wonder what's going on or try to start the car four or five times before they realize it's already on. Uh, the full charge for our Nissan Leafs, we, we have a couple of them. Um, we find it's roughly 2 to $3. We're paying commercial industrial rates, unfortunately. Uh, we get about 100 to 160 kilometers on them, again, depending on the HVAC use and whether or not you're a little heavy-footed on the gas there. So here are our Level 2 chargers for public use. Um, they're, again, a little bit bigger. You can see there we've got uh, on the right-hand side our, one of our Chevy Volts hooked up. On the left is a Nissan Leaf. Um, there's the Leaf again. And that's what we... We've already seen this. I didn't expect anyone else to have a photo of the uh, dash component of the Leaf, but there it is. Uh, there's the Chevy Volt. And that's what the dashboard for the Chevy Volt looks like. So our pooled vehicle fleet, in order to make uh, efficient use of these electric vehicles and to ensure that we were replacing the right conventional vehicles with electric vehicles, uh, we actually put in our own system. We have a reservation system. Uh, you get authorized by our fleet manager. It's, you send a little email. He sends back and says, congratulations, you're now eligible to log vehicles out using our fleet management system. Upon be, uh, getting that authorization, you log into the system from uh, either a specialized terminal or from your own desktop computer. You specify what type of vehicle you'd like, when you'd like to have it. Uh, any of the specifics, some of our vehicles are airside capable. Some of them have radios, so they can actually go right out on the runways and taxiways. Others just have the beacon on top, so they can drive around on the service roads. You actually get to specify all of that, which ones you need, uh, how long you're going to need it, when you expect to have it back. If you uh, suddenly find yourself in need of a vehicle uh, and you didn't expect it ahead of time, we actually have what's called a grab-and-go system. You walk down to a kiosk, you punch in your login information, say, I need a vehicle right now, here are the specifications for what I need. An electronic audit trail is uh, managed completely by the system, which is terrific for our fleet manager. It watches the reservations, uh, which users are using the vehicles the most, the vehicle information themselves, how far the vehicles are going on either a charge or on a tank of gas, depending on whether it's one of our conventional vehicles or one of the hybrids or one of the full electrics. The pooled vehicle fleet management system, uh, all of the administrators have access to that. So this is the kiosk on the right uh, for signing out vehicles. Uh, this is the one at our administration building. On the left is the lockbox that contains all the keys to the vehicles that are in that parking lot. So you walk up to the system, you type in your login, it says congratulations, um, I will unlock the box now for you for 10 seconds. You have 10 seconds. Open the little box. There's a light above the key that you're allowed to take. You turn the key, pull it out, close the box. You're good to go. This is what the software looks like for the fleet managers. I don't get to see this myself. I'm not quite that lucky. This is back from 2010. Um, there's a lot of capacity here. I'm not expecting anybody to actually see what all of these various things are, but lots of little graphs, some pretty displays and basically it actually monitors each and every vehicle when it was last serviced, when it's due for its next service, what had to be done, how many kilometers on it, this sort of thing. We do have kind of a specialized fleet. We have about 5,500 acres. Uh, yes, 5,500 acres I think it is. So most of our trips are actually very short range trips but they're very stop and go. So electric vehicles actually make an awful lot of sense for us, probably even more so than for the average fleet. So Great, that's terrific. We've got the level three chargers for the specialized equipment. We've got some level two chargers for vehicles available to our own staff. 
What's next? What's next is public charging stations. Um, what we have done is uh, we're actually already installing these. There will be no additional charge to use these charging stations. They are going into our parking garages, so they're there is unfortunately a parking fee. However, there's no additional charge for the charging stations. Um, we're putting in uh, level one charging stations in long-term parking. So these are people who are generally going to be there at least overnight. The level one charging, of course, provides a full charge in maybe 12 hours or a little more, depending on how empty you are to start with. Uh, we're also putting in level two charging stations in terminal one short-term parking. So these are people who are maybe making a day trip. They might just be coming in to pick somebody up. Roll up to one of these. They are all in premium locations, so they are closest to the bridges that go across from the parking garages over to the terminal. Um, and they are reserved for electric vehicles. Anybody who's not driving an electric vehicle who plugs into one of those is going to get a little nasty gram from one of our commissioners or something. So... Uh, the ones we've put in so far are dual port chargers, so there are four charge parts total, already available in the, par uh, the valet parking level at Terminal 1. We, are, uh, we have a target of installing at least 20 of these chargers by the end of the year. So we are taking this very seriously, and uh, here's what those charge stations look like. And that's sort of another look, but I mean, the building on the other side there, that's the terminal. So these really are premium locations. You walk about 25 steps and you're at the bridge that goes across to the terminal, and there you are on the departures level. So we aren't doing this alone, obviously. I mean, this has come up over and over again. This is a significant partner partnership. Uh, we're very glad to have been able to partner with the Toronto Atmospheric Fund on this, Ben Morand. Um, has been our partner there. Uh, I guess he's not here today, but Mike asked me to give him a special shout out just because he's been really helpful. Um, we've also had a lot of dealings with General Electric. They are providing some limited release charging stations equipped with media centers. We are hoping to get some of these. So you can actually put little advertising if you just want to advertise your electric vehicles or uh, the other charging station locations, that great, that's great. Or you can actually sell advertising space on those units at least it's something, right? Um, these are called the Watt station, apparently. News to me, sorry. Uh, most of the current stations that we have are Dura. Again, maybe that means something to the fleet managers out there. Um, not part of fleet-wise, but just in general, GE is partnering um, with, I think it's Best Buy, to sell chargers for the general consumer market. Uh, so it's not... It, this, as has been said, this is not just for big business. This is actually rolling out for everybody. So, again, I just grabbed this. Here are all the various EV300 partners, and we've been very glad to partner with them in order to expand our fleet vehicle capacity in terms of electric vehicles. I think I zipped through that pretty quickly, so we might actually be back on time again. Thanks very much.